Urinary retention, what is it? Well, it's a situation where your bladder is not releasing all the urine. So any urine that is retained sometimes can back up in the system, it can create congestion within the kidney and lead to a lot of complications. I'm gonna cover the causes of urinary retention and also a really good solution. One third of the adult population and 80% of females have some form of bladder issue. It could be the sensation of having to urinate, but not a lot of urine comes out. So how does this affect someone? Well, the kidney is a filter and it's supposed to filter the blood. It works very closely with the liver, which by the way, also filters out the blood to some extent. It helps to break down caffeine, alcohol, medications, toxins. And so the liver and the kidney work together. If you're not able to fully eliminate all your urine, uh, that can lead to edema in your feet or in your lower legs. It can lead to a loss of protein in the urine, which you might identify as albumin. And so when you lose too much protein, then the protein in the blood goes down and then the tissues start backing up with fluid. Now, when you urinate and you smell a very strong odor in your urine, like this super pungent um, ammonia smell, that has to do with the incomplete breakdown of proteins. There's something called the urea cycle where your liver is breaking down protein. And as it breaks down to ammonia, it's supposed to then break down to urea and it should be eliminated through the urine. But what happens if this whole biochemical pathway doesn't work, you're going to get a buildup of ammonia in your urine and it can even back up into the blood it can go to the brain and it can lead to all sorts of additional symptoms like brain fog, uh, even very extreme to the point where you lose consciousness. So smelling too much ammonia in the urine is not good. Now, if you're a diabetic, you may have sugar in the urine. And by the way, the number one cause of kidney damage is too much sugar or a diabetes situation. That's called diabetic nephropathy, not neuropathy, but nephropathy. Nephropathy means there's a problem with the kidney. Now, if you have a problem with the metabolism of protein, guess what? You're going to lose a muscle. The term for that is called sarcopenia. And it happens as someone gets older because you're just not able to get the protein into your muscles and your tissues. Other complications of this would be fatigue. You can experience itchiness. And like I said, brain fog. So before I get into what to do about this, uh, let's just briefly talk about what causes it, okay? Uh, diabetes does because the high levels of sugar damage the capillaries of your kidneys. So the nephron, which is the little filter in your kidneys, basically it's a little bowl of uh, capillaries, um, small blood vessels that help uh, filter the blood. And high levels of sugar flowing through your blood damage those arteries that create scar tissue and they can create permanent damage. And on top of it, when someone is a diabetic, they're usually doing a lot of high carb meals. And that alone will cause a tremendous amount of uh, retention of fluid. An average person on a high carb diet is carrying around, I would say anywhere between 11 and 13 pounds of extra fluid. See, the goal is to get rid of this fluid, not to retain it. So we need to understand why the kidney would retain fluid. It could be you're diabetic, you're doing high carbs, it could be simply you're just getting older and you're naturally gonna have a loss of these little nephrons or filters in the kidney. Now, it also could be in a large prostate pushing up into the bladder. That can cause you to retain urine as well. Or if you're female, you have a fibroid which is pushing up into the bladder. Now, another common situation is the huge amount of sodium people consume with very, very low amounts of potassium. An average or standard American diet is heavy on the sodium, uh, including monosodium glutamate, and very low in potassium, as in high potassium foods like vegetables. And the reason I know that is because the average person only consumes one and a half cups of vegetables every single day. That's pretty, pretty low. And the definition of vegetables is very, very wide. It could be a potato. It could be corn. It could be that uh, tomato V8 juice. All right, another common cause of uh, bladder retention is a problem with the autonomic nervous system. That's the system that controls the contraction and relaxation of the urinary bladder. 
as well as a lot of the valves in your private part. And so if you have a problem, let's say you have your sympathetic dominant and you don't have a strong parasympathetic, that alone can create a loss of capacity to hold urine, eliminate urine, control the valve, which also controls the release of urine. And on top of that, the more pregnancies a female has, the more things get stretched out of the normal form. Then you also have uh, kidney stones and bladder stones. That can back up uh, the urine in the kidneys and, and then the rest of the uh, body as well. And lastly, medications. Um, antidepressants, other medications have a side effect of causing urinary retention. Okay, well, that's all very interesting. What do you do about it? Well, number one, probably a very important thing to do is to start cutting out your carbohydrates and sugar because that is usually the thing that is destroying the kidney. So we want to stop the bleeding and stop the oxidation and damage to these little capillaries. Not to mention, you're going to find that you're going to dump a lot of water. You're probably going to dump between 11 and 13 pounds within the first week or two. So that'll take a lot of stress off the kidney. All right, number two, you do want to increase your fluids to help build up more volume, to add more pressure, to start cleaning out the kidneys and the associated pipes or tubules that are connected. So I would recommend drinking about three liters of fluid. That's 12 cups per day. It's not that hard. And I would highly recommend that you drink this in the first part of the day, not the second part of the day, especially right before bed. Now, the other thing that you can do is uh, instead of taking a synthetic drug for, as a diuretic, and I'm not telling you to come off your medication, check with your doctor. I'm saying there are alternatives. There are natural herbs that act as a diuretic, okay? One of them is dandelion greens. You can go to the grocery store and you can just buy those and put those into your salad, okay? It's a very potent diuretic. The other powerful diuretic that I recommend would be watercress. At the grocery store or health food store, they sell watercress. It's a type of leafy green that's actually a cruciferous vegetable. And it's probably one of the first vegetables ever consumed by humans. It's a potent diuretic. Now, next point is potassium. You wanna increase your potassium. Why? Because potassium is a natural diuretic. It pushes fluid out. And so the way you do that is you consume more vegetables. And I'm talking about at least seven cups per day. Now, it might seem like a lot, but you can just break it up through the meals. And it doesn't have to be just salad. It could be like celery. It could be asparagus, other leafy greens. Now, you can also enhance this with a good high quality electrolyte powder that has a lot of potassium. And yes, I do recommend my brand because it's high quality. I will put a link down in the description. Now, the phytonutrients in these salads also will protect you uh, against whatever condition you have. Like if you have some type of chronic I don't know, diabetes or um, arthritis or existing chronic kidney damage or inflammation, these phytonutrients are very, very powerful to lessen the complications from that issue. So they will greatly lessen the symptoms that you have, even if you never get rid of this condition. And lastly, if you have this strong ammonia type urine, this odor, um, it wouldn't make sense to start overloading the liver and kidney with more protein. I recommend doing a moderate amount of protein with each meal, not a high protein meal. So consume between three to six ounces of protein per meal, but don't go any higher than that. That way you won't overload your liver and your kidney and you'll utilize the protein that you're consuming. Now there's one more important video for you to watch on the kidney. I put it up right here, check it out.